So, Deborah, everybody is talking about this new show of yours. What can you tell me about it? Good, good, good. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons you need to be watching Hacks. I guess I do some good stuff. Good is the minimum. It's the baseline. Well, then for Jim and Junior. Okay, can you bring back lunch for me, please? For this list, we're looking at the best things about this new comedy drama. Let us know if you're watching the show or if we've convinced you to give it a look in the comments below. Number 10. There will be a second season. Now that the big show's all planned, maybe it's a good time to talk about the future. There's always just a little bit of hesitation to start a brand new show, no matter how good it looks, without knowing if there's going to be a second season. There are few things worse than finishing the first season super excited for season two, only to find out that it's been canceled. I hear you. <sighs> That's totally fair. We've all been there and we get it. Which is why we wanted to start this list off right away with the news that HBO Max has already renewed Hacks for a second season. Wait, what? In fact, they did it back in June of 2021, just a month or so after the show premiered. Back up. Here we go. Number 9. The Broad City Connection Just because someone has done great work in the past doesn't necessarily mean that everything they do is a hit. You're supposed to be listening. We've <laughs> talked about this. You listen and you take notes, right? Yeah, so, okay, where's my notebook? But it's definitely a good sign, as is the case with the co-creators of Hacks, Lucia Agnello, Paul W. Downs, and Jen Statsky. You see, the three of them all previously worked together on one of the best comedies of the 2010s, Broad City. Yes, queen! Yes, queen! Yes, queen! Well, one day, on their way to a monster truck rally to film something for Downs' episode of Netflix Presents The Characters, they got talking about funny women who didn't get the recognition their male equivalent did. And that conversation was the germ of the idea that led to Hacks. Could be good. It could be good. It could be bad, but it could be good. Number 8. Emmy Nominations We think Hacks is one of the best shows on TV. Trust me. Okay. Okay. I do. But to quote numerous infomercials, don't just take our word for it. The members of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences think it's pretty darn good as well. In fact, the show racked up a total of 15 nominations for the 2021 Emmy Awards. Oh my god, what? That's amazing! <laughs> it picked up nominations in multiple acting categories, including lead, supporting, and guest. And the show itself picked up nominations for both Outstanding Writing for a Comedy Series and for Outstanding Comedy Series. Mm. Good to know. All very well deserved. Number 7. It won't take up much of your time. Time. We'd all like more of it, and there never seems to be enough of it to do everything we want to do. It's all karma. I deserve it. We get that fitting another show into your repertoire right now might seem like a daunting task. But that's just another reason why you need to be watching Hacks. I guess you've got it all figured out. While there will be a second season, right now there's only the first season, consisting of 10 episodes averaging about 30 minutes each. Which means, after you watch the first episode and love it, you can binge the whole thing in like five hours. Another one? Don't you have to go just step on a glass or whatever? That's less time than it takes to watch Titanic and The Notebook back to back. And who hasn't done that at least once or twice? I have plenty to do, you have plenty to drink, I'll let you get to it. Number 6. Vegas, baby. Do I have to go all the way to Beverly Hills or something? Um, no. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. The current temperature is 111 degrees. Las Vegas isn't often used as the setting for a TV show. When we think Vegas on screen, the first things that come to mind are gangsters, criminal capers, and CSI. And for some of us also, Rain Man and Swingers. What are you talking about, Vegas? Vegas, baby, Vegas! Oh, yeah, and The Hangover. But what's fun about Hacks is that it gives us a look at Sin City through two very different lenses. Deborah Vance is a Las Vegas legend living in a mansion, driving a Rolls Royce, and flying in a private jet. On the other end of the spectrum, we have Ava Daniels, a young comedy writer from LA living in a casino hotel, eating from the cafeteria and trying to get work done among the slot machines. Hey, can I get you a drink? Oh, yes. Um, can I get a vodka soda? Sure. Yeah. Oh, drinks are on the house. Oh, can I get two? Oh, I'll get you three, sweetie. Number 5. Insight into the entertainment industry While the relationship between Deborah and Ava is the heart of the show, the entertainment industry is what brings them together, for better or for worse. A gig's a gig, honey. And as we see, there is a lot of for worse in the business. Ava is in her current desperate position because of a tweet she sent out that basically got her cancelled. This is so unfair. 
Would a hug make you feel better? As for Deborah, she is a living legend, but she's also dealing with the ageism that's common in the entertainment industry and towards women in particular. The show might not be about the industry, but the business is all around, and Hacks does a great job of giving us a look behind the scenes without being overhanded about it. God, Ava, I told you that business is so unstable. I mean, what, what's next? You're gonna have to move home here and live with us? I don't have room for you here. Number four, girl power. Ava and Deborah are both strong women, but that doesn't make them the same. Just as they see Vegas through different lenses and are dealing with different aspects of the harsh entertainment industry, they also have different ideas about how to fight it. Please, just by getting up on that stage, I gave other women more than I ever had. Deborah came up when her business was even more male-dominated than it is today, and she fought for everything by working hard, writing jokes, and making success her power over sexism. And it doesn't get better. It just gets harder. Ava, on the other hand, wants to attack and confront the unfairness head on, rather than just prove it wrong. I I'm sorry if I was unfiltered and honest or whatever, but that's literally what people like about my writing. Now, now all of a sudden it's a problem? Number three, characters with depth. Sure, on the surface, Deborah is the Vegas legend in the twilight of her career, and Ava is the snarky Gen Z comedy writer. But that elevator pitch does not do these women or their characters justice. <laughs> Okay, I think what we have here is a pretty classic generational misunderstanding. There's much more to both of them. And another thing that makes the show so good is how they slowly reveal all the more. And I realized that people would rather laugh at me than believe me. We don't get one big information dump or one big lay it all out there speech. The layers to both characters are peeled away throughout the season in ways that are totally genuine to them and their story. You don't get to tell me what's important. You're risking nothing here. This is just a blip. You can get on a plane tomorrow. This is just going to be a funny story about a job you once had. This is my life. Number two, Jean Smart is back. Oh, they're not here? Am I early? It's very funny. The designing women star never went away, but as the 2000s rolled around, Jean Smart was not on the tips of most people's tongues anymore. However, she continued to work, and starting around 2015, saw her star begin to rise once again with Emmy-nominated roles in both the second season of Fargo and, in 2019, the HBO limited series Watchmen. Also, in 2021, just as Hacks was premiering on HBO Max, people were watching Smart in her Emmy-nominated supporting role in Mayor of Easttown. They say it's difficult for women in Hollywood to find good roles as they get older. But Smart has bucked, or shall we say hacked, that trend. Okay, this was fun. Yeah, okay. Oh, you don't have your Dita cup in, Oh my god. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lots of laugh out loud moments. We can tell you about the depth of the characters, the setting, the interesting and intelligent look at the entertainment industry and women in said business, but the show also needs to be funny. <laughs> Not only is it a drama comedy, but the two main characters are a comic and a comic writer. So if they aren't funny, the other stuff doesn't matter. What is this? That's my bra bucket. There's no storage no, here. No, 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 this. Oh, that's my matcha latte station. You're not bringing that. Move your ass! And while many of us use LOL in our text conversations when we haven't actually laughed out loud, we can legitimately promise you genuine laugh out loud moments galore, having audibly ha ha many times every episode. I don't need your job. I'd rather have my dignity. <sighs> oh, oh, holy shit, we're right. It's okay, it's okay. I'm good. It's all good. Hey. Your diva cup fell out of your bag. <sighs> Thanks. And it isn't just the two main ladies, either. The supporting cast is also great, and we especially love show co-creator Paul W. Downs as Deborah and Ava's manager, Jimmy. You know, she specifically <laughs> requested to be on your desk. She did? Yeah. You almost got stuck with some Harvard nerd always bragging about his Fulbright. God, that would have been so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.